Hey gang, hope you're all hanging in there. You know, I've been praying about ways that I can serve you and help you all during this really uncontrollable and uncertain time. And I know for me, a way I can feel in control is by fueling my body with foods that I know help me feel my best. And then Whole30 announced they are launching a worldwide Whole30 starting on April 13th. And I thought, perfect timing. So with that in mind, I am taking on private clients only. I'm not going to run a big group for April, but I'm taking on private Whole30 clients and you can save $50 by using the code SELFCARE at checkout. I will include a link in the show notes for you. Or if you're just wanting a little added virtual accountability, then you can try out my Whole30 Anytime course. You know, for me, I don't need to do Whole30s anymore. I'm comfortable in my food freedom, but my food freedom has been pretty challenged during this time. And my kids keep wanting to bake chocolate chip cookies, which is like my favorite thing ever. And I'm stuck at home, so I'm eating a lot of chocolate chip cookies. And it's not serving me mentally or physically because I'm eating like a lot. (laughs) Um, but for my food freedom, I do have chocolate chip cookies, but it's getting a little out of hand from what I like to do. So I needed to get back control of my food freedom and use the strategies that I know to help me feel my best. So I did decide to launch a two week food freedom group. We'll be going through my favorite whole 30 book together, food freedom forever, doing some self care and journaling strategies, sharing daily recipes, and really just trying to rein in your food freedom and what that looks like to help you feel best during this quarantine we're going through. So check out the link in my show notes. Like I've mentioned in all my social posts, if you think doing a Whole30 right now would stress you out more so than help you, then don't do it. Or if you have a history of disordered eating, don't do it. Like I've always said, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle, but with all the added stressors in our life right now, I don't want to add any extra pressure to you. But for some people, a Whole30 can help them feel in control. So let's get into today's episode, and I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Here we go. Hey friend, welcome to the Self-Care Isn't Selfish podcast. I'm your host, Emily Nichols. As a Whole30 certified coach, wife, busy working boy mom, and your self-care guru, I'm here to help you start putting yourself first without the guilt. Each week, you'll hear motivating and practical tips on how you can create a habit of self-care through interviews with my amazing guests or quick solo episodes with me. After each episode, you'll walk away with an action plan and feel empowered to implement what you have learned into your life. So grab a cup of coffee, glass of wine, or your favorite sparkling water, and let's do this. You're listening to episode 36 of the Self-Care Isn't Selfish podcast. I hope you all are doing well. I can't wait for you to hear today's episode with my special guest, Lindsay Heim. You know, when I launched the podcast last year, she is someone I've always looked up to as another fellow Indianapolis podcaster and as an amateur runner myself, I really get a lot of inspiration from her podcast. So she was one of my dream guests and I was making out a list of people I would love to have on the show. And she said, yes. So I can't wait for you to hear more from Lindsay and all the nuggets of good stuff she left for us along the way. But let me tell you a little bit about Lindsay if you don't know her. So she is the mother of four boys. Yes, four, ages one, three, five, and seven. And she's the host of one of the top running podcasts called All Have Another with Lindsay Heim. She also founded a new podcast network called Sandy Boy Productions and has a couple other podcasts under that umbrella that are just as amazing. She's a distance runner herself. She's actually completed 16 marathons. I'm not even interested in doing one, so I think that's really inspirational in itself. But she helps coach athletes to complete distance, both in person and virtually as well. Her podcast is really inspirational. She has a lot of, it's a running podcast, obviously. And regardless if you're a runner or not, you can really gain a lot of inspiration from her shows. And Lindsay and I recorded this episode, the whole COVID-19 quarantine hadn't happened yet. 
And I think there's quite a few takeaways from this episode that I see a little differently now versus when we recorded the show, especially coming from watching my husband train for a marathon and not be able to do that marathon. I'll touch on that later in the show, but for now, sit back and relax and enjoy this episode with the amazing Lindsay Hine. All right, gang, please take a moment and welcome my guest, Lindsay Hine, to the show. Lindsay, say hello to everyone. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me, Emily. I'm so happy you're here. Um, And as you know, I start every podcast with this one question. So, Lindsay, what does self-care mean to you? Oh, boy. I thought about this a lot, and I feel like it changes day to day, year to year, depending on what's going on in my life. Um, But I think it's just taking time to do um, not just what gives me space, like away from work and away from my family sometimes, because I have four really little kids, and sometimes that can feel really overwhelming. But sometimes it's taking time to for me personally, do things with my family that's just totally disconnected to anything else going on in my life, whether that's running or podcasting or their school, just literally um, getting away for two hours from the house and leaving my phone at home and just totally immersing myself in in the moment with them. Um, I feel like self-care can just be, it's just such a, um, it's something that people, um, kind of obsess over in our culture sometimes. And I have to remind myself like, okay, if I'm going to get myself some Starbucks or I'm going to get myself a massage, that, that is a form of self care. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I I like to say I don't have a lack of of self care in my life. I don't know if that make your podcast is called self care. Is it selfish? Sometimes I'm like, does that make me selfish? Cause I really Uh, do make time for it. Well, that's amazing though. And like you said, you make space for it and it can look different based on the season of your life. And it doesn't mean you're off doing something by yourself, although there's nothing wrong with that, but also being disconnected from everything else and just focusing on your family is a high form of self-care too. Yeah, for sure. Because I feel like if I let that fall to the wayside, um, I get so caught up in work, 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 getting everybody from one place to the next. I don't take the, if I don't take the time to slow down and just literally soak up just where we're at in life as a family, then I just let it, it just gets away from you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I could talk about that forever. Um, Okay. So let's talk a little bit about you. Can you tell everyone a little bit about your story, where you've been and where you are now? Sure. Well, I grew up in Bloomington, Indiana and moved to Indianapolis out of college. So I went to IU. My husband went to IU. We met working at the Village Deli in Bloomington. Okay. I know where I went to IU as well. So I remember that very well. Oh yeah. Anytime I say that and people went to IU, they're like, I used to love the Village Deli. Um, But yeah, we moved up here after college and uh, about six or seven years into marriage, we started having kids and now we have four, uh, four boys, ages seven, five, three, and one. So it's a busy, loud household we have here. Um, but anyway, we, I started running in high school and kind of just always was part of my life. And it was a big, it was a big part of my life. Even in college, I I just ran really to stay in shape, but I always consistently did it. Like I've never gone through a period of time where I just didn't run. Um, and then in 2008, the year my husband and I got married, we decided to run our first marathon. And upon crossing that finish line, I was thinking, I'm never doing this again. (laughs) Like, I felt like my body was completely shutting down on me. It was awful. Uh, However, I qualified for Boston, which was kind of a surprise. And I just decided that this is something that people have a big goal for, for years and try for a very long time to do. And so I thought, "I, I have this opportunity. I should definitely take advantage of it. And so I, I ran Boston and my husband signed up for another marathon too, because he couldn't be outdone. (laughs) And I kind of got hooked like that second marathon. I ran way slower than my first, but I wanted to figure out a way to do it better and do it faster. And so, um, that kind of just spiraled into us running marathons and being really immersed in the running culture here, both locally and, and nationally. And about, Four years ago, I discovered podcasting and I would go out on runs and I would constantly be thinking about 
um, the type of show I wanted to listen to and I couldn't find it. So I would always come back, you know, you get back from a run and you're all fired up, like, okay, I can conquer the world. I can do it all. Mm -hmm. And I would have all these ideas. And, you know, I, my husband would be sitting in the kitchen and I'd just say, I want to do this, 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 and talk to this, these people. And, um, I just decided I was going to launch a show and, and it's turned out to be what was a goal to kind of be a hobby, like slash, maybe it could make it a career has turned into a career for me. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Um, it's not without, it hasn't been without a ton of hard work and just hustle, hustle, hustle. Um, that being said, we're talking about self-care here. Yes, I've hustled, but I had definitely take times where I'm just done. I'm just down with work. I'm not doing it. Like if after a big event, I will just break for like at least a week where I hardly do. I just do the bare minimum to, um, to do what needs to be done. So Anyway, yeah, it's been really fun. I get to talk to so many professional and both everyday athletes as well and just learn their stories and get to communicate that to an audience that um, has really turned into a special community for me. That's amazing. Um, like I mentioned before I hit record, um, I'll have some questions for you later from my um, girlfriends, our runner girls here in Brownsburg where we live. But um, I feel like running is such a mental and physical journey, especially if you're training for a marathon. I've never done a marathon. My husband's a marathon runner. Um, and just seeing the time and dedication going through training and mishaps that happen along the way, you know, like, oh, am I getting a shin splint? Am I going to get, you know, injured and how that affects you mentally and especially doing it with your husband. I think that's really cool as well. So how do you overcome those mental blocks? And even I know running with a group of friends, everyone runs their own pace. And sometimes yeah. I think you fall into a comparison trap as well. So how do you get past those mental blocks and comparison? Well, I've been running for so long now that I kind of just know what my body can handle and what it can do. And I am a huge believer in running your easy days easy. Mm -hmm. um, it's really funny because anytime I schedule to go run with someone, I feel like they'll often say, oh, but I run so slow and, you know, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to schedule to run a casual run with you on a workout day where I'm trying to do really fast intervals right. or something. I, usually I could care less what pace we're running. If it's a, just a scheduled easy day, I'll run 10 minute miles, whatever it is you want to run. I just, at that point, I just want to get the miles in. Um, so yeah, it, and it's also funny because I have a couple girlfriends who, on runs. They always want to run a little bit faster than me on easy runs. And we'll meet at like six in the morning. Um, I'm actually getting ready to meet one of these girls when we get off the call. And she's always running like just a little bit faster than my body's ready to go. And I'm like, can we please slow down? Yeah, back it off for at least the first mile. <laughs> um, but also I think as I've aged too, I just, I don't really care what other people are doing with their running. I want to celebrate them and cheer them on, but I'm competing against myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just ran the Donna half marathon on Sunday and my husband, he runs a lot faster than me. So in races, he can just run alongside me and kind of encourage me, mm -hmm. which is a blessing and also like a curse at the same time, because it can be really irritating when the person next to you is like all bubbly and happy, put, you know, and you're just like dying. Um, <laughs> you're like, I love you. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. He went from like, you can work harder, keep working hard, keep pushing to, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. And I told him afterwards, I said, once you switch to, you're doing a great job. I, I was happier with you <laughs> when you were telling me to work harder and I was already working really hard. I kind of wanted to punch you in the face. Right. Well, especially it being your husband. Too. Yeah. Oh, like, totally. Okay, back off. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, it's, so during that race, a local girl, a local woman here that lives here, Molly, my friend, she ran by us and she said, you know, she gave me some encouragement. I gave her some encouragement. And then she was a little bit ahead of us the whole time. And Glenn would say, go, go get up there with Molly, go get up there with Molly. And I was like, I don't care what Molly's doing. I, I am just trying to finish this race. And there was just like no competitive instinct in me. Uh, that being said, if I was trying to run like a race PR or something and there was a female in front of me or a male, I would probably try to use that as motivation to like pick it up. Right. Um, but I just, I think at this point, it's not like people like me are training for Olympic medals or anything like that. So to me, it's just like, I want to 
you know, run the best that I can run in the fitness that I'm in at that point. And that's what, that's what matters most. And I also want to celebrate and cheer the other people on around me. Like I was so excited to give Molly a hug after the race. Cause I knew she had just worked really hard for 13 right. miles as well. Right. Well, I think, and you've done such a great job with your shows, building a community around running. And I don't think people realize until they're immersed in the running community, how much people do want to lift each other up and support each other. I ran, oh, yeah. I ran monumental in November and I followed, I'm so fly the seat of my, fly by the seat of my pants. I'm like, okay, I'll just go run. Um, but my husband, you know, he wrote down a training plan for me and I stuck to it and was doing, you know, every tempo Tuesday, every Tuesday and doing intervals. And every time I was like, this sucks. I hate it. He goes, yeah, that really sucks, but it's going to make you faster. Um, but I ran and I ran a 159. I'd never ran under two hours at a half. That's and awesome. I know for some people that's a really big deal the first time, but, um, through my watch on my Garmin, all my girlfriends that weren't there at the race were tracking me on my app and just constantly texting like, Oh, Emily, you got it. You got it. And they were like, so happy for me. And I was so happy that they were so happy for me. And, I feel like in the running community, there's such encouragement with that. And like I said, you've done such a great job of cultivating that with your show as well. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think it's an extra motivation to the fact that the races have tracking so that, you know, like as I'm stepping over these timing bats, my friends might be following along and there's kind of just like a, an inherent thing in your head where, you know, if people are cheering you on, you want to do well. I, I remember when I ran the New York city marathon in the fall, um, I ran it a lot faster than I realized I, I could at the moment. And every time I crossed the time mat, I was thinking about my husband at home because I was like at least 10 minutes faster than we talked about running. And I was thinking he was probably like, what are you doing? Yeah, he's what are you in his mind at home. Yeah. And then I, at, once I got to like 16, I, he was probably like, when's she going to fall off? And so every time I hit a time mat, I was just like, prove it to him, prove it to him. You are not going to like yeah. fall off this wagon. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a motivating factor to know people can track you and can cheer from you in person and virtually. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your shows a little bit more. So you have, I'll have another where you bring on a lot of different um, professional and just runners in general. And then you have the Illuminate podcast. Can you tell us a little bit more about the shows and what people would expect if they haven't listened in before? Yeah, I would love to. I, so I'll have another has very much turned into a running focused podcast. Um, when I launched the show in 2016, um, I just, I really wanted a casual show where I could share stories, interesting stories and, you know, I wanted it to be conversations where you're out for a run or you're doing your laundry or you're commuting and you could just kind of sit back and feel like you're part of the conversation. Um, and I, and I wanted it to be in a way that when, when I'm asking questions, someone's answering, I'm just kind of like following along in conversation as you would a friend at coffee mm -hmm. and learning more about their life. So, um, you know, as time went on, it just, became very clear to me that this was a running podcast. I kind of tried to put in some other episodes that weren't just about running and um, not that the episodes are. I definitely go deeper into people's stories than just their running, but the resounding theme is that these people are runners at this point. Yeah. Um, and so I'll have another, I came up with that name because I was like, well, my sister actually came up with the name. And the idea is like, I'll have another mile to run. I'll have another cup of coffee, another glass of wine. And at the time when I launched my podcast, I was pregnant with my third. So I was like, I'll have another baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I was secret pregnant too uh, when I launched. So yeah, that was kind of, it's just, and, I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of like a form of self-care. Like, what would you like another of, you know? Yeah, what would make you happy right now? So anyway, yeah, that show has been going for four years. It comes out every Friday and um, I'm doing a lot of episodes right now kind of around the Olympic trials mm -hmm. that are coming up in the marathon in two weeks. Um, but you'll hear from professional runners, Olympic gold medalists, but also there's some episodes with everyday runners as well that you people can relate to a little bit more. Sure. Um, and then that I saw – pretty big su success with that as it, the show grew. And I, I kind of, as I studied podcasting, realized that, um, starting a network was probably my next step in the business world of podcasting. And so we launched Sandy Boy Productions, which is the podcast network that 
I guess I'm the owner of. It's kind of crazy. You just, awesome. you know what you do, you do? You make up a business and you just own it, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I was doing. I just, but I knew that podcast networks were the next big thing. And, um, and it's just like when I started my podcast, like I didn't know what I was doing, but I just decided to do it. So um, little by little, day by day, we're slowly getting Sandy Boy off the ground. You know, the website is up, but it's a work in progress very slowly. Sure pick and choose what you have time for. Um, but now we have three shows in the network and that is my podcast. I'll have another with Lindsay Hine and then another running podcast that I do not host, but it's called the up and running podcast. And my friend Lauren hosts that and it's, it's, um, keeps you up to date on news in the elite and professional running world. And then she does a catching up with an interview based episode every other week. Um, and then the third podcast in the network is called the illuminate podcast. And I host that with a couple of my girlfriends here locally. We take turns hosting. We don't have like two hosts on one interview. Um, and we just interview people that are doing cool stuff in the world, like good, good stuff. A lot of social entrepreneurs. Um, one of the episodes is with my friend George who uh, founded a nonprofit called building tomorrow. They build schools in Uganda mm. And then we have some other fun episodes with a dietitian, a sex therapist, um, all kinds of different different episodes there. I, I like to think it's like, it's not super niche down, but it's definitely the kind of podcast where I would go to, you know, and that's what I always try to think of when I launch a new podcast. It's like, what do I want to listen to right now? What is my mo my demographic of people? What, what are we looking for? Yeah. Um, so yeah, those two shows are growing and I'll, I'm continuing to grow. I'll have another and I'm really excited about the, the network as well. I think we'll continue to grow that and bring some more shows on and, um, just create this community to be stronger and bigger and hopefully reach more lives. That's great. I love that you kind of just did it and was like, well, I'll just figure it out as I go. <laughs> and you know, like you said, you're wanting to put out shows that you think, well, I would really like to listen to this out on a run or doing the yeah. dishes because that's when I listen to a lot of my podcasts that I like to listen to as well, including yours. But I think what you said, you know, with, um, I'll have another, each runner has their own story. They're not just like, oh, I trained for Boston and I ran it in this time. Like there's yeah. some type of overcoming arching story, but also with the Illuminate podcasts, um, the episodes I've listened to, I feel like it's really motivating and inspiring to be like, man, these people are really doing some really cool things. I didn't know this was available here in Indianapolis or that someone was doing that. And yeah, um, that's kind of the vibe I get from both shows. And I think it's just so cool. Yeah. And with Illuminate, my, my goal really is for people to walk away thinking, oh, they're doing something really cool and helping people or doing something with their lives that they are passionate about. What can I, like, if I'm not already doing something other than going to work or, you know, maybe I'm a runner and I'm running, but like, what else am I passionate about? And why not me to take the step to like do something about it? You know, my friend George who founded this nonprofit, like that's, I don't want to do that, but like, that's a massive undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, and he could have easily, he was young when he did, and he could have easily just been like, it's too much. Like, yeah, I can't do that. It, it, I'm too young. And, um, so I just hope people walk away from those interviews feeling like, okay, this is, I've been thinking about this for a while. It's on my heart. I want to do it. I'm going to go do it now, or at least I'm going to take one step in that direction to make something happen where I can pursue that passion a little bit deeper. Absolutely. Just inspiring them to up level their lives just a little bit more or seeing how they can serve others. I mean, it all comes around for sure. Yeah. I just think one of my biggest messages is I always ask people at the end of my show and we ask it on illuminate too. What's your one message to send to the world? Um, and then oftentimes people will ask me that as well because they say, Oh, you always ask that on your end of your show. And I always just come back to don't be complacent mm -hmm. because it's just so easy to just think, Oh, this is what we do, but this is how it is for my family. Like I can't change this, but it's like, but, but can you like, you Why know, maybe not? you can, you know, and maybe you don't need to, and maybe you don't want to, but if you want to, you probably can do something to change. 
Hey gang, cutting in on this conversation real quick to tell you about my friends at The New Primal. I love this company not only because they make Whole30 approved sauces and meat sticks with just clean ingredients, but because of their mission of returning to the table. You know, food really does bring people together and with all of our busy lives, it's hard to sit down to a meal together with your own family and your other loved ones. But the new Primal is really focused on community and bringing people together around food. And why not do that with clean ingredients? I use their classic marinade weekly. Their mustard barbecue is the perfect dipping sauce and their ketchup as well. My kids love all their different spicy buffalo sauces as well. And like I said, their meat sticks are Whole30 approved, so I always have some in my handbag or in my glove compartment in my car if I need a quick emergency snack. So head over to thenewprimal.com and you can use the code EMILYNICHOLS22 to receive 15% off your order. So remember, go to newprimal.com and let us know how you are returning to the table and connecting with others through food and the new primal. Even as simple as, you know, recently I've started trying to get up earlier and I've kind of always just been like, I'm, I sleep in until six or seven because that's the, that's the amount of sleep I need. And if I need it, that's fine. But like, I don't need it as much as I allow myself to. And I want to get up earlier because I can be more productive and enjoy my mornings before my kids get up. So, um, that's just a small example of how I'm choosing to not be complacent to sleep until six or seven every morning, you know? I love it. I love it. Well, it's a mindset shift too. I used to always say, oh, I'm a night owl. I hate getting up early. And now I get up at 435 to go run most mornings. That's morning. amazing. And I'm like, that's so dumb that I used to think that way. But I get so much more done when I do that. And because I am a busy working mom, I'm like that's my time, my self-care time to do that. But, yeah. You, oh my gosh. Getting up at 430. So I haven't, I haven't dived into it that deep yet. My earliest is usually 515. Well, and your kiddos are super little right now too. So. Yes. And you know, it's different than baby, baby, like newborn waking up all the time. But I will say I did get woken up three different times last night by kids. I mean, I was able to go back to sleep, but like that definitely is an, uh, that's interrupted sleep. Yeah. You know, yeah. for sure. And I probably have a few more years of that. Um, yeah. where it's pretty consistent. <laughs> yeah. My boys are, well, my oldest, he's almost 12 and my youngest is eight. And it's, I'm finally at that point where You're at I, it, I yeah. can get up early and do that. So yeah. I mean, my seven year old is my, the one that's on our floor basically every night, but I'm like, Hey, as long as you don't t- like wake me up or, Everyone's or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Just go to sleep. Just, you know, whatever you start in your room at least though. Um, but yeah. Well, Lindsay, just a couple more questions for you. What has been one of your most memorable races or just even a training run? Well, I I think I'll say the New York City Marathon this past year. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to New York for work. I was doing a live podcast recording and I signed up for the marathon because I thought, well, I'm going to be there anyway. And so I trained up you know, bare, kind of bare minimal training, uh, but enough to know that I could do it. And I really surprised myself and ran a much faster time than I thought capable I was capable of. And I think so much of that, well, A, it was the crowds because the crowds in New York City are amazing. Uh, but B, I think it was just like, it was such a mental, um, a mentally strong day for me out there. You know, you can't will your body to, move much faster than you're trained for, you know, you put the work in and you get the result. That's, I mean, that's pretty much like basic math with running. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think experience paired with being mentally tough that day probably got to me to the finish line at least five minutes faster given where my fitness was. And so, um, I'm going to say that race. And, and I think it just taught me that, um, I can will my body to work harder than I ever realized. Um, and, and again, that's remembering that you have to put the training and you can't just go will yourself to run really yeah. fast. Yeah. Um, but you can, will you can slow down because you're not mentally tough sure. if you want to. So, sure. um, if you let yourself, so I think that that, that race and, and just, I have never run the New York city marathon until this past year. And I had heard great things and I was really nervous about the bridges 
the hills on the bridges. So um, I surprised myself kind of marching up strong on those. And I just, the energy of that day was just so incredible. So um, put that on your bucket list, everybody. I love that. I love that. Well, and I always, I teach um, fitness classes as well. And I always say your mind is stronger than your body. Um, but if you haven't put in the training though, too, you can't, like you said, yeah. will yourself, I'm just going to run faster because I can. It's yeah. Like the legs will say no, but you no. haven't trained us to do that. No. <laughs> What's your most memorable podcast episode or interview? Gosh, there are so, so many. I would say probably one of my most memorable, okay. One of my most memorable will probably have to be my uh, live show that I did in New York City. Um, I've done a few. I've done four. And the first one, though, was in 2018, and it was with Paula Radcliffe. And she was the current record holder in the marathon, the world record holder in the marathon. And I think the reason that was so memorable for me is that uh, I had interviewed a woman named Christine Burke with the New York Roadrunners. And during that interview, I was just feeling very like this poll to say, hey, I would love to do something with you guys one day. Like I would love to do a live podcast with you guys one day. And we actually connected after the interview and made that happen. And I think it was just kind of like a defining moment in my career because I stepped outside of my comfort zone and just asked for something that I wasn't sure what the answer would be. You know, yeah. I think a lot of times we're scared to ask for things because we're afraid of how we'll feel if the person says no. Mm -hmm. And what I just learned from that experience was that she might have said no, or she might have said it's not the right time, but she said yes. And then it, kind of spiraled into me going back to New York for several other live shows and, and really giving myself a platform to say, Hey, look, I've done these live shows in New York. Now what else can I do in these other, you know, maybe other races or, you know, it kind of just elevated my, um, my career a little bit. And, and I really am super thankful to Christine for that. But that, that <laughs> the funny part is that I did that interview two and a half months postpartum oh. and you know, some of my best friends will say, you were going really hard right after you had, had the baby. Um, and I, we all deal with postpartum anxiety and, and all that differently. And for me, um, kind of jumping back into work was actually helpful to mask like any kind of issues that were going on. And I say mask, but I just mean like kind of like redirect my thoughts. Yeah. You know, because I could sit and focus on how anxious I am because of this new baby. But for me, it was helpful to get back into work quicker. Um, and that's been different with every baby. But um, the point of the question is, I think that, that that live episode was probably one of the most meaningful episodes to me. It was really cool to connect with Paula Ratcliffe. She's an iconic figure in the sport. But also, as I was sitting up on that stage, I had a lot of moments of doubt, like during that interview. And I felt like kind of, I was zoning out for a minute cause I'll, you know, those postpartum hormones, oh, yeah. but I held it together. <laughs> um, but also I, I learned from that experience that even if I hadn't held it together, it would have been okay. Yeah. You know, it would have been okay. And that's, that's fine. And, and maybe, maybe, um, nobody else realized what was going on except for my, except for me. But, um, I think that giving myself that opportunity, like jumping into that was, was a really big thing for me. So I would say the Paula Radcliffe episode. Ah, I love that, Lindsay. So many nuggets. Of that was a long, stuff. that was a long explanation. Well, you know, I feel like, you know, when I launched the podcast this past August, I have felt for like a whole year, I felt like this calling, like you need to start a podcast. You need to start a podcast. And then I yeah. did it. And I was like, wow, that felt really good. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm going to ask people to be on this show. And if they say no, no big deal, but no one's ever told me no. <laughs> and it's like amazing. Yeah. It's empowering. Well, and I'll tell you, people have told me no. And sure. it is kind of like, oh, like why? Why are you why? telling me no? Like what's, what's wrong with me? Um, but I don't regret asking. And um, even today all the time, you know, when I'm seeking sponsorship and and doing things, I, I get told no all the time. And I, you just have to just not, you know, th that person telling you no isn't then thinking about it for like the next 
three weeks. You know, they're not like, I can't believe that Lindsay girl asked me that question. Like, I can't believe she would have the audacity to ask me to be on her podcast. You know, they just said, no, I don't have the time for that right now. And they moved on. So, um, I, if you don't ask, you won't know. And so I think that that's definitely something I've learned along the way with this business. That's great. Well, let's wrap up. Um, I asked my girls that I run with if they had any questions for you, because quite a few of them listen to your show. So I just have a couple, and then I have one for me. Um, okay. The first one is your husband, Glenn, is like super supportive of what you're doing. And I love that he's a runner as well. One of my girlfriends said, he just seems so mellow and easygoing. <laughs> and, but she said, does he, do they realize about the secret following <laughs> that he has? <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. He will, he will think that's so funny. And I'm like, he, that's it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he is definitely chill. Like, and yeah. that evens me out a lot. And don't be fooled. Like we definitely get at each other and like, just like any married couple does or, you know, anybody with a partner, it's like, we, we definitely have our, our own issues inside the home. Sure. Um, but he, yeah, he's super supportive. And I think, I think he, he thinks it's really cool what I've done. Yeah. He is not a natural entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, he works in a normal finance job, goes to work eight to five. I will give him this credit. I, he has made his job so flexible. You know, he could easily be like, nope, I just go to work. You know, this is what I do. I have to be at work at this time because that's kind of what the traditional schedule is at his business. Um, and I know everybody doesn't have this flexibility, but he's kind of like made it known at work that he's just going to like, there are going to be days where he has to leave early because, you know, he has to cover for me with the kids when I have an interview or um, he'll work from home, even though it's not really like the traditional thing to do there mm -hmm. on certain days, if he's available to, I mean, there's lots of days where he can't because right. he has to be in the office for meetings, but um, he has really been really flex as flexible as he possibly can be working in the corporate environment, um, to support my business. And, and honestly, since I've launched Sandy boy, he has taken on, I told him, I said, I can't manage all this right now. Like I can't manage the, the finance side of things. Sure. It's not my specialty. I'm not good at it. I will lose track of things. And so since Sandy boy launched, he has totally taken over all the invoicing and stuff. And I'm like, really happy about it because I'm like do you see all this like extra like Amazing. little like you know business like businessy clerical type work I was doing outside of all the other stuff right um so it's been a huge lift but yeah he um yeah he's and he's funny too we have I have a patreon page I don't know do you have a patreon page for your no. podcast I have a patreon page and we record an episode uh once a month and I think some of the people on Patreon think that he's like the best part of Patreon because he's just got this kind of like sarcastic personality. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he's definitely, they, they got it right. He's definitely pretty even keeled. That's awesome. You guys are a good team and playing into each other's strengths. That's awesome. Um, another question one of my girlfriends asked, and I know your boys are young, but they were asking if your boys ever tried to run with you or how to get them into running. You know, we've done run club here with my boys and my oldest is in middle school now. And he was like, I think I'm done with running for now. Um, but they, we do Spartan races together and stuff and fun mud races like that. And my youngest, um, we said, do you want to do, um, running club again this spring? He was like, no. He's like running really far. It makes me breathe hard. And like, <laughs> I want to walk and I just get really tired. I just don't want to do that. That's <laughs> but, hilarious. But a lot of us have boys and we were just wondering if your boys run with you. I know I see a lot of you pushing the stroller with the guys on there. Yeah. Well, actually like I have not done as many, nearly as many stroller runs as I used to. I used to stroller run all the time. That's hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went through a phase where I was pretty freaking good at it and liked it. Um, but once I hit four kids, it like the stroller running has just become very like, minimal. How could you do that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just kind of like, I just use my running time away from the kids. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, my son, my oldest is seven. He's in first grade and he participated in the run club, the monumental marathon. They do at IPS schools. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And, but let's talk about self-care, Emily, because he did the whole program. And then the morning of the race, 
I had about seven people in town um, for the marathon, and I had a big live show that night. It was probably the most involved live show I've ever done as far as like me being involved in the planning and mm-hmm. sponsors and all that. And um, I just told a, like my mom watched my three big boys that weekend. And basically I was like, you're not gonna be able to do the race this year. <laughs> the race that you trained for. But he really wasn't that sad. It was going to be really cold. And I promised him, I was like, we will do another 5k for sure. Okay. Um, but you I don't do it all sometimes. Yeah. It just, it really wasn't going to work. Like it just, as, as the time got closer, I was like, we can't manage all of this. Like yeah. it won't, like there just wasn't, it wasn't going to be okay. So well, probably wouldn't anyway, have been enjoyable for all of you. Either. No, every, I mean, we had like six people staying in our house. It just made more sense for my mom to take my boys. Um, that being said, we do, we are very active together as a family. Actually just yesterday, my second who was five, he said, um, we really need to get on the bikes again. And I was like, oh yeah, because we do bike rides. And I said, oh yeah, we do, buddy, when it warms up. And he was like, no, we can do it when it's cold too. And I'm like, dang it, we can't. Shoot, I don't want to ride bikes when it's cold. It needs to Um, be warm. (laughs) But last summer for the first time, this was like, this has been my dream. I have years seen moms like running on the Monom with their kid, like riding the bike next to them. And last summer we've been, we were able to make the dream come true. So, um, my oldest and my second oldest will ride the bike and then my husband will push the double and I'll just get a run by myself. Nice. Um, and not until recently did I realize, oh my gosh, Lewis, my second was only four and a half last summer. And we were doing like six mile runs with him on his bike with That's no training impressive. wheels. Right. For that little, like, Yeah. Did I, I, I was, I think I was acting like he was older than he was, but I mean, he handled it like a boss, Yeah. Um, which is funny because my older son, I don't think he was riding without training wheels till he was five. Cause just cause we didn't really practice with him. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited to do that this summer. And then I, I didn't mention, um, we always do like the mini marathon. They have the rookie run mm-hmm. and the mini, mini. And so we always sign them up for that. And, um, I always get really competitive when they're out there. Like, That's so funny. I want them to win. <laughs> You're like, go. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely an annoying sideline mom when it comes to running. I love it. I'm, but it is I'm not at the soccer games. That. Yeah. Yeah. I'm quiet mom at soccer games, but when it comes to running, I'm like, I know you can work harder. Go. I mean. <laughs> I'm I'm known when my husband races, they're like, okay, there's Emily going, go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? As a runner, it does help when people are cheering for you. It does. Well, I've asked him, I'm like, hey, so when I cheer for you, is that annoying or motivating? He goes, oh no, it's motivating. He goes, I love hearing it. Like there's yeah. been a couple of times I haven't been able to see him race. He goes, I kind of missed hearing you and the kids yelling and screaming. And honestly, goes, okay. <laughs> if you say the right thing, it sometimes can like switch, turn a switch in someone's brain and like help them to kick it up a gear. Yeah. All right. My last question for you. So my husband um, qualified for best Boston last year. Okay. Um, he was two minutes under his qualifying time and he missed the cut by 10 seconds. Uh, so annoying. So he's running the Carmel Marathon on April 4th. He's in his training right now. He's about halfway through. Um, and what's really great is he'll go up the next age bracket to 40 and older. So he's got all this extra time now, but he's super, he's like, I still want to do under three hours. He ran a 303. Um, and he's like, I still want to do under three. Um, so we're excited to see him qualify again and actually get into the race. And what was really cool is his dad ran the Boston marathon for the first time when he turned 40. So it's kind of a full circle moment for the family and everything. But what is your biggest advice as far as going to Boston and running the race? Um, well, we always stay in Cambridge, okay. which I think is fun because it's close enough that you can kind of like bike over or walk over to where everything is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can get on the buses, you know, easy to get out to Hopkinton in the morning. So I would say where you stay can be key. Don't stay near the start line, stay near the finish line. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just think you should just go out and enjoy it. I yeah. mean, he might want to run hard and that is great, but I, I just like put the training in and then don't overthink it, show up, 
you know, you got to get on those buses early and bus out to Hopkinton right. for, you know, it takes like an hour or something to get out there. And then you're going to sit in Athletes Village for a little while. So it's kind of like a big production in the morning. Mm -hmm. But once you get to the start line, all that kind of falls off and the race has started and you can just go. So I would say just go train up, do all you can, and then just enjoy the experience. And you'll want to work hard probably once you get out there. Um, but my biggest piece of advice to him for the Boston course is he needs to train on hills and it, yeah. specifically he needs to run downhill a lot. Mm, and people okay. think, oh, that's weird. Like running downhill cardio wise, that's not helping me. But like you, if you do not train running downhills for Boston, your quads will just get shredded up and you'll yeah. get to the halfway point and you, you won't be able to like move your legs very well. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I would simulate runs on the treadmill even and just go downhill for like six miles and Absolutely. then start my run going, you know, flatten up in training runs because that's what you do in Boston. You run downhill for a really long time before yeah. you do much else. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. We're excited to go. I mean, after, um, Carmel, we're like, we, I was like, we need to book what we're going, where we're going to stay like now for the next year yeah. as well. So we'll figure all that out. So, well, Lindsay, thank you so much for taking the time. Do you have, I know you mentioned, um, you have some events coming up in conjunction with the mini marathon, which is a huge half marathon here in Indianapolis. Can you tell everyone a little bit about that before we take off? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I'm so excited. I've got a bunch of friends coming in town for the mini and we'll be doing the race, but I'm also going to be doing a live podcast recording at the expo um, the day before. It'll be that Friday. I'm not sure the time yet, but I'll put it up on my website and the mini will be sharing about it as well. Um, so yeah, that's probably the next big local thing I have going on to be determined who the guest will be, but um, it's going to be really fun. And then the, the, friends of mine that are coming into, into town, they're kind of, um, they're like running bloggers and, and they're well known in the running community. They're going to stick around and have a meet and greet time for everybody. If they follow along their blogs, they can, sure. they can meet them as well. So I'm really excited about that. And if your listeners, um, haven't signed up for the mini and they want to, they can use the code another five and get $5 off. It's a whopping $5, but still hey, it's it something. Adds up when you're doing all the races too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and if anybody listening lives here and hasn't done the mini, I feel like people kind of, people that have been running for a while think, oh, the mini's too busy. Like there's so many people down there. But man, I just think that race is so fun. It is um, an experience. It's an experience. You can still run fast if you get in a faster, it, like in a higher up corral. But also like, it's just so good for our community. There's yeah. so many people come in town to Indy to run it and it's great exposure for our city. So um, I think the older I get, the more I just have a lot of pride in Indianapolis yeah. and big events like that are really cool to tell cool. people about. Well, me and my runner girls might have to hit up that live podcast. Recording. You should come. Yeah, fun. definitely. That sounds fun. The expo's fun anyways, too, with everything they have going on. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. for sure. Well, I'll make sure to include information to that in the show notes, but Lindsay, can you tell everyone where we can find you online? Yep. So um, on Instagram, I'm Lindsay Hine 626 On Twitter, I'm at Lindsay Hine, And then I have a Facebook page as well. I'll have another podcast with Lindsay Hine. We have a group as well. Um, and my website is lindsayhine.com. Awesome. Lindsay, thanks so much for this conversation. So appreciate you. Thanks, Emily. I so appreciated Lindsay coming on the show to share her perspective on all things motherhood, running, being an entrepreneur. I feel like whether you're a runner or not, you can take away a lot of great things from this episode. And I hope you go over to I'll Have Another and her other podcasts and take a listen to her shows as well. So as always, I always share my three biggest takeaways. So here we go. Number one, run your own race, <laughs> whether an actual like race or the race of life. I feel like as an amateur runner myself, I always, and I can say this speaking on behalf of my other girlfriends I run with, I think sometimes we compare ourselves to other people um, in running, for example. Oh, I can't run as fast as them. I can't keep up. And it feels lonely and so discouraging to be running behind the pack, to feel like you're always trying to catch up to people and you're just not fast enough. However, you have to run your own race. You know, train the way you want to. 
get your mind right as well and be okay with where you are. Like I mentioned in last week's episode, let good enough be good enough. You know, you can strive and train as hard as you can, but sometimes our bodies just aren't equipped to do what other people do. So run your own race. But this is also a really great way to think about life. You know, you may always feel like, oh, comparing yourself to other people on social media, for example, that you're just not, you know, to where they are. You just can't catch up. And that's okay. You're not running their race. You're running your own race. And you have to do what you are capable of doing. So be okay where you are. You know, you can train hard in life or in running to get to a certain point. But remember, you are running your own race. You're not running anyone else's. My second biggest takeaway from this conversation with Lindsay, it was brought up a couple of times, but if you have something on your heart, try it out. Give it a shot. I feel like with this whole COVID-19 thing going on right now, we've been gifted a little bit of extra time. Not everybody, but a lot of people have been gifted a little bit of extra time. So if there has been something on your heart that you've wanted to try, now may be the time. And it doesn't have to be, you know, launching a podcast or a business or a nonprofit or anything like that. It could be, oh, I've been wanting to put together a self-care routine. You know, I've talked with a couple of clients this month since the quarantine happened where they are wanting to rein in their self-care routine because they feel like now is the time where I can make the time and make it work. And then when I go back to work, I will still have this new habit and keep doing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, when I launched the podcast, when I listened back to my first few episodes, I was, I'm cringe. I'll probably cringe when I listen to this episode maybe in a year as well. But I feel like as long as you're trying something new, growing, that's great. But there's no pressure. You know, don't put so much pressure on yourself. Let good enough be good enough again and just try something new. This is the time to take advantage of the extra time. Take advantage of this gift. And if there is something that you feel like you have been called to do, then try it. We aren't meant to live mediocre lives. We're meant to live extraordinary lives. So why not take advantage of this time and do something new that's maybe been on your heart? And lastly, one of my biggest takeaways from this conversation is to be adaptable. And I probably wouldn't have come up with this takeaway if we aired the show a month and a half ago when we recorded it. But with everything going on with the quarantine now, I feel like it's really important to say this. Like I mentioned earlier, and if you've listened back to um, some of the other episodes I've had talking about my husband, you know, he's a marathon runner. He was in the process of training for a marathon. He was supposed to do one here in Carmel, Indiana on April 4th. Um, to qualify for the Boston Marathon for 2021, to qualify again. If you listen back, you heard that he qualified, but then was 10 seconds off from the cutoff. Um, So his training was going really well. He was fighting off um, a stress fracture, and he's like, I could probably only run a couple more weeks, which was fine because the marathon was coming up. Well, then the quarantine came about, and he, like many other people training for races, the marathon was delayed till June. We're hoping it still happens in June, but he's had to be adaptable. You know, I've had friends who were going to run the Boston Marathon in April. They were in the process of training. They were almost done with their training. You know, they probably had a quarter of it left and Boston got moved back till later this fall. That's gut-wrenching. They're so heartbroken. And I know there's a lot of other people feeling that way about grief, about other things that didn't get to happen in their life because of this quarantine. I know for my friends and for my husband, they put in all that hard work for nothing, but it's going to have to be a delayed gratification or satisfaction from their training, and they have to start over again. And I feel like everyone needed a chance just to live in that grief. It was okay to be ticked off about it. It was rightfully so to be mad about the situation and know that you put in all of that training and you were going to have to wait and restart your training later. So be in your feelings. It's okay right now to be in your feelings, but don't get stuck there. You know, my husband's made a plan. He's going to still run that marathon, but he had to live in those feelings for a while. He dusted himself off. And he's made a plan moving forward and he feels better because now he has a plan and knows what to expect moving forward. 
However, I know he and you as well can be adaptable if those plans change again. So be adaptable, live in your feelings, but make a plan moving forward when the time is right for you. You don't want to get stuck in your feelings right now. And I know that can be really easy to do with everything going on. So again, Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the show. Like I mentioned earlier, I so look up to you and what you've been able to build with your podcast and the community that you've built as well. You know, I was supposed to do a half marathon um, later in April in Kentucky, and I so was not (laughs) trained or ready for it. So I know I'll be listening in to more of Lindsay's episodes to help inspire me to run this race later in the year and keep my training going. I know for me right now, running outside is a really great form of therapy, you know, still social distancing, but luckily the weather's been nice enough. I've been able to get outside and enjoy the fresh air, and I hope you can do the same. So if you feel inclined to please leave a rating and review, I'll make sure to include in the show notes links to listen to Lindsay's show and connect with her as well. And give me a follow over on Instagram at Emily Nichols Tutu or at Self Care Isn't Selfish Podcast, where you can learn more about my coaching opportunities and just more self care inspiration and maybe a few laughs here and there. With this extra time, I've been trying TikTok. <laughs> which I think my 12 year old thinks I'm like, I've seen his his eyes roll at me so many times, but it's something fun. I'm trying out and it's entertaining me. I don't know if it's entertaining anyone else, but it's helping me pass the time, you know, Hey, trying something new with this extra time, but thanks so much for listening. in. I love you all. I'm thinking of you all praying for safety, mental clarity, and your health. So see you all next week. And remember, in the meantime, self-care isn't selfish.